Hello and welcome to Insight of Thalmology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to another lecture. Today we are studying the slit lamp examination techniques. So slit lamp biomicroscopy is basically a dynamic examination in which you are examining the eye not just anterior to posterior that means from the cornea to going up to the retina but also horizontally that means even from nasal to temporal area so up down left and right and even anterior posteriorly you can actually scan the eyeball using this instrument and this is called slit lamp biomicroscopy based on the position of the illumination arm and the viewing arm different type of examination techniques are present now in the for the purpose of this video we shall be studying basically two different techniques number 1 is the diffuse illumination and number 2 is the focal illumination and under the focal illumination again we have various kinds of techniques which will be explained in this video so apart from that there are various other illumination techniques as well so diffuse illumination that we shall be studying focal illumination in that we have direct and indirect focal illumination the retro illumination the oscillating illumination of kepi the specular reflection sclerotic scatter now let us first talk about the diffuse illumination in diffuse illumination basically the beam is open and that means we are actually allowing the light to fall almost on the entire uh, eyeball or the cornea so you can see over here if this is the illumination system which will actually project the light you can see how diffuse the light is it is almost covering the entire surface of the cornea so here the beam or the slit beam is an open beam that means the light that we are throwing is more diffuse so a diffuse illumination can also be compared to a torch light examination in which the illumination is more diffuse so that we see the entire eyeball in toto in once so here the beam and the observer system is at 45 degrees angle the filter that we are using is a diffuse filter and you can use the magnification from 10x to 16x or 25x so the purpose of diffuse illumination basically is to allow the overall survey of the eye and the ocular adnexa moreover it helps you to determine the general features such as the color of the eye size and various other relative position of the structures in the eye okay and a diffuse illumination is usually followed by tangential illumination so i will tell you in a while what is meant by this tangential illumination so in diffuse illumination what happens is we have a illumination system here suppose now this is throwing a wide beam so you can see the light is almost sweeping across the cornea from here to here and at this place is the examiner okay so this is a viewing system because the examiner is actually viewing the eye from here and the angle between the two systems that means the illumination system and the viewing system will be about 45 degrees and when this angle becomes 90 degrees that is called a tangential that is called the tangential illumination that means you are throwing the light almost parallel to the surface of the iris Now as i told you a, a diffuse illumination basically helps you uh, to survey the entire eyeball along with that the lids the lashes the carinkle sclera the surface vessels and even media opacities all at once so it is very similar to your torch light examination so in this picture you can see there's an iris cyst along with the vessels or vascularization and this is an example of diffuse illumination so in diffuse illumination you can see a lot of things you can see lesions you can see the total extent of the lesion okay so you can actually measure the length and the breadth and uh, length and breadth of the lesion sometimes you can even see the dm folds as seen in this picture along with corneal edema you can see vascularization as seen in this picture you can see the vessels growing from the limbus onto the surface of the cornea superficial vascularization the corneal edema can be seen haziness can be seen various uh, lesions in the lids as seen over here okay so the lashes if there's any blepharitis even that can be seen in diffuse illumination periorbital swelling small swellings near the eyelid your callaisions hodiolums all those things can be uh, observed very well on the diffuse illumination after the diffuse illumination what we have is a focal illumination 
Now, uh, in diffuse illumination, the beam was kept very wide. However, in focal illumination, as the name suggests, we are going to actually narrow down that beam and shorten the height also of the beam. So, in diffuse illumination, the height was also full, okay, almost about 14 mm, and the width is also kept a great. So, what you get is a round spot like this uh, featuring on the eye. However, in the focal illumination, you are going to make it all uh, short. Even the width will be decreased and even the height height will be decreased okay so that is called focal illumination so here the examiner is actually creating a spotlight to permit viewing of an object of interest so you you're not actually seeing the entire eyeball so uh, focal illumination is usually for uh, done after general illumination or a diffuse illumination so what i mean to say is suppose you find a lesion on diffuse illumination over here now the examiner wants to actually observe this um, a lesion in isolation without illuminating the surrounding areas then the type of illumination that he will be using is a focal illumination in which he is going to focus directly on this spot. Now uh, the focal illumination is again of two types that means direct and indirect illumination. In direct illumination we are going to focus the light source exactly on the point where we want to observe whereas in indirect uh, focal illumination the light source and uh, the viewing system are not in the same plane that means the light is focused slightly behind or in front of the lesion that the examiner wants to uh, study so that is called indirect focal illumination that we shall be studying in the next video. So in this slide I will try to tell you what is the difference between diffuse and focal illumination. So as you can see in this part in the first picture the illumination beam or the slit beam is quite wide and covering almost the entire surface of the cornea and this is a diffuse illumination and the viewing system is over here and this viewing system we can actually rotate this viewing system left and right and view almost the entire uh, surface of the cornea. Now in focal illumination however you can observe that the beam is narrowed to a spot okay and we are observing that spot so that is called focal illumination at this point because we are illuminating directly the point and we are viewing the same point it is called direct illumination both the illumination beam and the viewing beam are in the same plane and therefore it is called direct focal however what is the difference between direct focal and indirect focal so let us see in the first picture is showing the direct focal illumination in the second picture you can see that the light is being focused somewhere here and the observer is obse uh, observing the mm, eyeball over here at this point so these two points are not coinciding so mm, this is called indirect focal illumination so basically what we are doing in an indirect focal illumination is that instead of using a direct light source we are using a stray light that means we are going to focus the light over here and this is going to create some background uh, illumination for this lesion to be seen and this is called indirect focal illumination where the viewing system and the illumination system are not in the same plane. So now coming to what are the various types of direct focal illumination. The direct focal illumination can be of three types the optical section, the parallel pipe illumination and the conical beam. So let us see what are these one by one. Let us start with the optical section. So optical section is as the name suggests you are going to create certain knife like horizontal section throughout the cornea lens and the anterior vitreous. So at one point you are going to see the, uh, uh, the section at this level at this level and you can even take the section at this at that means at the um, lens level and even you can take sections over at the level of the what do you say the anterior vitreous so what you are going to take over here are the horizontal sections of the cornea lens and the anterior vitreous now the for the, for the purpose of optical section the beam that you are going to see is going to be very narrow beam okay almost about 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 millimeters will be the thickness of the uh, beam so that's very very important now once you have done that you're going to see 
two beams on the uh, patient's eye so i will discuss uh, it with uh, you now so as you can see here this is actually a schematic diagram which is showing you the parts of slit lamp so this is just to explain you from where can you control the slit width so this is the width of the slit controller so from here you can choose the different types of width of the slit whether it is a diffuse one or a narrow one or a very narrow one as in the case of an optical section okay and from here this is called the graticule so from here you can control the height of the slit so if this is a slit beam that you see on the patient eye this is called the height and this is called the width for the purpose of optical section you have to take a very narrow width okay and the height can be adjusted using this knob over here and the measurement will be depicted in this area and this is called the graticule of the slit lamp now the same thing uh, here with the real picture so this knob over here is actually the slit width controller and this one is the slit height controller so once you're going to take an optical section so what you're going to see let us specifically talk about so what happens is that you're going to see two beams the one the first beam is going to be a nice focused beam and that is coming from the cornea and the second beam is an irregular beam like this this yellow color beam which is not very well focused and this is coming from your iris and what is present in between the cornea and the iris it is the anterior chamber as you can see the anterior chamber is an optically clear medium it is not going to reflect any light uh, source that you are projecting at it and therefore the anterior chamber will look totally black in color okay so here we are talking about the optical section of the cornea so optical section can be optical section of cornea or it can even be of the lens or it can be even of the vitreous it all depends on where exactly you are focusing the light so first let us talk about the optical section of cornea here you can see that the light source is being focused exactly onto the cornea and therefore it is called the corneal section or the corneal optical section. Now this kind of section is used uh, specifically to determine the thickness of the cornea, any areas of thinning, any areas of thickening and even distortion of the corneal contour. Now this picture over here is actually telling you about the optical section of the cornea. So you can see the various layer that you can actually study using this optical section of the cornea. And what is the uh, main uh, thing that you need to remember to obtain an optical section is that keep your width of the slit very very narrow. So as you can see, you can see this bright thing which is called the tear film and behind the tear film you have the epithelium. Again bright thing you can see behind and that's the endothelium. In between you have the stroma which is looking granular. Then you can see this black media in between the iris and the cornea that is the anterior chamber. You can even see the tear meniscus, you can see the eyelids and eyelashes of course those are not important. What is important over here is the optical I'm trying to show you is the optical section of the cornea. So what do you actually see and how do you study the optical section of the cornea? In optical section you have a tear film layer which is the most anterior one okay and it is going to look bright in color. Then we see the epithelium which will look a little bit darker. Then the bowmans uh, will look bright in color again bright line. The stroma appears grayish somewhat granular under the low power and then if you actually put high power you can even see greater details but in order to study the stroma better it is always better to put a parallel pipe illumination instead of the optical section then the endothelial zone also can be seen and that is seen uh, as brighter than the stroma but it is not as bright as the tear film the tear film is the most hyper reflected reflective and the brightest of all so as I told you, you can actually study the thinning and the thickening of the cornea in the optical section. So in this first picture, you can see this area of thinning and this is actually a case of pellucid marginal degeneration in which there is an inferior th thinning of the cornea. Then this is a diffuse illumination picture you can see. <coughs> You can see so many uh, striped uh, stripe and you can also see so much haziness in the cornea and this is a case of striped keratopathy corneal edema and you can see that the thickness of the cornea over here is definitely increased indicating corneal edema. 
Apart from that, the optical section is also used to assess the depth of the lesion, assess the depth of the foreign bodies on the cornea and various kinds of opacities in the cornea. So as you can see, this is a foreign body present and you can see it is actually uh, limited almost up to the epithelium a little bit into the anterior stroma. Okay, so this is how you assess the depth of the foreign body using an optical section. Again, this picture over here actually showing you there is an opacity on the surface of the cornea. The first picture is actually a parallel pipe uh, illumination. I will tell you what is a parallel pipe. And then if you want to know the extent of the lesion or the depth of the lesion to be more specific, then you have to take an optical section. So you can see in the optical section where exactly is the lesion. The lesion is present just in the anterior part that means in the epithelium and a little bit in the anterior part of the stroma. So the depth assessment of various lesions is important and can be done using an optical section. So just like I told you the optical section of uh, cornea, we also have optical section of the lens. But here you're going to move your joystick a little bit more forward towards the patient in order to focus your light onto the surface of the lens. Okay, so that is how you get an optical section of the lens. In the optical section of the lens, you're going to see various layers of the lens. So how do you know which one is the anterior and which is the posterior? This part is actually the optical section from the cornea. This is the anterior chamber. And from here is the lens which is starting. So this is the anterior part of the lens and this is the posterior part of the lens. Now, uh, if you can see the first picture, we know that the lens consists of a lens capsule. After that, we have a lens epithelium and then we have various lens fibers which are arranged as the cortex and uh, then there, we, there is actually the nucleus. So same thing is uh, what we are going to see in the optical section of the lens. This is the cornea, the anterior chamber and from here the lens starts. So this is the lens capsule and the dark part is actually the lens uh, epithelium and from there we have the cortex and then we have the nucleus. You can actually find out the uh, the location of the cataract, whether it is an anterior capsular cataract, a posterior capsular cataract, a cortical cataract or a nuclear cataract by taking an optical section of the lens. Now, in this first picture, it actually is the anterior subcapsular cataract. So here, just look at this. This is the, uh, the cornea. So cornea we know is anterior. So definitely over here, we can see some opacification of the anterior capsule. And this is the anterior capsular cataract. Over here again, this is the cornea. So this is the anterior capsule. And then over here is the posterior part of the lens. And we can see some thickening in the posterior part. So this is a posterior subcapsular cataract or opacity. Similarly, uh, in the optical section, you can even see the color of the nucleus and you can grade the nucleus sclerosis as nucleus sclerosis 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 based on the LOX classification. Okay, and so you can just compare the colors, uh, whether it is grayish or uh, somewhat greenish or amber color, and then it becomes more yellowish and brownish towards the harder grading of the cataract. Now, the optical section can also tell you and give information about the vitreous and it is specifically the anterior part of the vitreous. Now, again, to focus on the anterior vitreous, you have to move your joystick even more further inside. That means towards the patient and you're going to see a section which is present behind the lens and that is the vitreous. So you can see some opacities over here in the anterior vitreous. This is the lens. Okay. So as you can, as you could see that when we are focusing on the cornea, the lens might not be so clear. And when we are taking optical section of the lens, the vitreous might not be that clear, the cornea might not be that clear. Similarly, when we take the uh, op uh, op optic section of the vitreous, the lens is not that clear because we are focusing directly on the vitreous. Similarly here, this is the lens and you can see these refractile uh, uh, glistening particles in the uh, vitreous and this is actually your asteroid hylosis. Now, another type of section is the parallel pipe illumination. So let us first understand what is actually meant by this parallel pipe and how it is difficult from the optical section. Generally, when we are keeping the width of the beam very wide or very open, it is used to study the surface, okay, like the diffuse illumination. Whereas when we are putting a very narrow beam, as we have seen in the optical section, we are basically trying to, uh, to assess the depth 
of the lesions okay now a combination of the two whether it is the white beam in which we study the surface and a optical section a very narrow one in which we are studying the depth of the lesion is a parallel pipe illumination so a parallel pipe illumination is just a balance of the surface and the depth illumination okay it's a useful combination in which uh, the you can also study the surface and you can get some information about the depth as well okay so this is how a parallel pipe is going to look like so here you are going to use a 2 mm slit okay the width is important you are using the 2 mm slit enabling you to study the surface of the cornea as well as some part of the stroma and some part of depth of the cornea as well okay so now here this is a parallel pipe appearance you can see the decimate uh, so much amount of folds in the cornea in the endothelial layers this is the dm folds similarly here this is a parallel pipe so you can study actually the part of stroma also and you can see these um, uh, opaque whitish lines which are dividing as y okay as they move forwards and these are corneal nerves so in parallel pipe appearance you can actually study these corneal nerves and dm folds very nicely now coming to the conical beam or a circular beam now this is the third type of direct focal illumination here the beam height is also going to be decreased along with the uh, width of the beam so you are putting almost about 1 mm into 1 mm slit that means the width is 1 mm and the height is also 1 mm so you are actually taking a conical or it is also called a circular beam and the main purpose of doing it is to assess the flare in the aqueous chamber, uh, aqueous chamber cells or any pigments in the aqueous chamber now here let me tell you that the presence of fell, uh, flare and cells in the aqueous chamber basically indicates an active uveitis okay and why do we see this flare the flare is seen because of the tyndall phenomenon now so you use a very small circular beam and you project it into the anterior chamber at about 40 to 90 degrees angle and however the best reflection is seen when you put it at 90 degrees so you take a slit beam of 1 mm into 1 mm okay so you're from from your graticule and also from your width adjuster you are going to put 1 mm and you are going to focus over here in the anterior chamber a small spot okay so then what we see is uh, a slit like this so we are going to see the one slit which is coming from the cornea then you see one which is coming from the iris and in between what you see is the one which is going to come from the aqueous chamber so if you see a foggy appearance in between that indicates flare and if you see certain cells like this those indicates aqueous cells and that means there is an active uveitis going on in the patient however it is very difficult to observe this phenomenon with the iris as the background so what is ideally uh, accepted is that you put your corneal beam on one side of the pupil and the other beam on the other side of the pupil so that you can see the cells in flare with the pupil as a background because the pupil is totally black in color and the aqueous chamber also will be black in color so if there's any cells in flare you get a better contrast against a black background okay so this first picture shows you that there are certain cells okay in the anterior chamber and the second picture ideally it should all look like black in color if there is no flare okay if there's no fibrin in the anterior chamber which will reflect the light okay so normally what happens is the aqueous chamber is totally uh, it does not reflect any light so what you're going to see is a black uh, structure as the aqueous chamber however when there is flare uh, when there's fibrin present in the aqueous chamber because of a disease activity because of inflammation then the light is going to be scattered and that is called tyndall phenomena and you're going to see this uh, fog light or something like a foggy appearance from the aqueous chamber and this indicates that there is flare present in the anterior chamber now after all that let us talk about what is meant by tangential illumination now tangential illumination is very simple when the illumination beam is focused in such a way that it is striking almost parallel to the surface of the iris and the angle between the illumination and the observer is about 90 degrees it is called a tangential illumination now tangential illumination is specifically used to observe certain elevated abnormalities of the iris and you can observe them based on their shadowing effect so any kind of cysts on the iris tumors of the iris such things can be observed better uh, using the tangential illumination the idea is like uh, suppose this is the sun the sun is illuminating this 
uh, river on top tangentially so you can see this elevations more clearly the effects the ripples of the water can be seen more clearly because of tangential illumination of the sun and that is the reason why we use tangential illumination now this is uh, the pxf that is deposition of food exfoliation material on the lens can be seen much better in the tangential illumination of the lens and similarly over here you can see an iris cyst this is also more clear on a tangential illumination so that's all for today thank you and have a nice day